a very warm hello to all our listeners and a very special guest today. Welcome back everyone to our podcast Sea Kitchen and Cork Restaurant Talks where I Chitra Lekha a passionate foodie with an eye for business find my way into the US market into the US food industry and uh, speak with industry experts seeking their valuable insights. Previously uh, we did look at the different uh, formats of uh, food establishments for example diners and delis and um, uh, coffee shops and pizza areas and in my last episode i was accompanied by chris with whom i discussed in detail about a food truck business and uh, how much would that cost me while researching about my next steps after my discussion with chris i came across a very interesting quote that said um, marketing is too important to be ignored and left for just one department so i decided to jump on the topic and the folks at sea kitchen advised me to contact evan prasal at uh, univex corporation to know more about marketing and to understand the cost of it and all the ins and outs related to it um on one hand univex corporation is a manufacturer and a distributor of cooking equipments like slicers mixers and dough processors um and they pride it and it prides itself in delivering the highest quality products that provide total customer satisfaction univex uh, products are also known for their engineering which keeps them running for decades their products are competitively priced and uh, their solid innovation and safety features make univex products a uh, industry standard on the other hand we have ivan today with us who is the director of sales and marketing at univex corporation with a demonstrated history in working in the fields of marketing and content his successes include uh, digital marketing sales and marketing leadership team management and revenue growth amongst others ivan also holds an mba specialization an mba with uh, specialization in advertising and marketing while his previous experiences include a uh, account executive at m2 technologies and marketing consultant at ml sports group He is also an online adjunct professor at mark of marketing at the Southern New Hampshire University. Looking at your background and extensive experience, I'm sure that I will have a lot to learn from you today. So I extend my warmest greetings to you and welcome to our podcast. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm good as well. Thank you so much. Um yeah. I am personally interested in learning uh, how much it costs opening a restaurant in or, or another similar food establishment in New York and I have about 1.5 million dollars with me and I would like to understand how much of that should I be sparing uh, and spending on marketing especially for bakeries and food trucks as I hear that those are the two most popular choices of customers during summers and mm-hmm. also without marketing i have already read that there can be no success unless of course you're at the right place at the right time absolutely so uh, my first very first question is that uh, we often do hear about marketing about products so i have heard about food product marketing and beverage marketing but uh, how does one go about marketing a service like a restaurant and how does marketing a product and a service differ Yeah, definitely. So you definitely there's a fine line between a product and a service and organic versus paid marketing. Um generally the rule of thumb to spend between 20 and 30% of your budget on paid marketing. Um while organic marketing you can do once a day or once a week, twice a week. You just want to be consistent with it. Um especially in the food realm, it's all about visualizations. You want to see pretty plates, um a clean restaurant, really something that's um eye attractive. to a customer wanting to go to your establishment or ordering online. Um the other main factor is ease of use. So marketing, you know, easy to order, quick deliveries. Um factors that want a customer to go to you versus a competitor uh really play in that general role. Oh, I already have so many questions that I had in my mind uh, that 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 are suddenly popping that I want to ask you. But uh First things first uh, does marketing strategy change for different types of food businesses for example if i'm opening a cafe or a diner or a pizzeria does it differ for the kind of establishment i have 
Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely based off your target market. So if you're going after more of a cafe style versus pizzeria, your whole theme, your colors that you use in your advertising, the tone that you use in your advertising um, when you talk to your customers and the people that you're trying to target are completely different. So those are all things to consider. Also, where you're located. Um, do you have a brick and mortar facility? Are you using a test kitchen or a food truck like you had mentioned? Those are all things that you want to factor into your marketing side um, of your business. Okay. Um, and uh, how important is it to, you know, have a website for your restaurant or can we skip that if, for example, I have a certain kind of establishment for, uh, for example, say I have a food truck, then can, is it possible that I can skip it or how important or how relevant is having a website? So again, that it varies depending on what you're trying to do. Um, there definitely should be some form of menu or options for your customer to see. It doesn't necessarily have to be a website, but if you have a, let's say an Instagram page that people can go to and you have your menus or you know, a social media channel that your customers can go to um, to see what you have to offer is super important. Obviously, you don't want to be a random uh, restaurant with no idea of what anyone knows of what you sell or make. So either a website or some sort of channel for you to see what you have to offer to your customers is super important. I was going to ask about that, that uh, what do you think is more powerful uh, while marketing a local restaurant? Is it social media or is it more physical marketing like flyers or banners or the local radio? That's a tough question. Definitely a combination of both. Um, you want to have a social media presence, um, but especially local word of mouth is definitely the best best marketing. It's the quickest way to, you know, if you want to say go viral in a sense uh, to your local market. So you definitely want a little bit of both. um, But if you get good word of mouth in your local town, that's definitely going to be a nice, nice boost. I actually was going to ask about this that I keep reading about, you know, um, email marketing or word of mouth marketing. And it really, uh, it really matters what your reviews are and how, how many reviews do you have as well. So uh, do you have any advice about how I can uh, garner more reviews for myself and how do I um, or how do our listeners cope with negative or critical reviews? Yeah, so you definitely want to have positive feedback for negative reviews. Um, you definitely want to acknowledge if they did have a bad review, figure out why and then fix the problem. Um, at the end of the day, um, email marketing is great. You don't want to be too salesy or too pushy. Uh, you really just want to keep it very business, very business professional and almost in a personal tone um, to where they don't feel obligated to buy from you, but you show them what you have to offer. Yeah, because a lot of time it happens that we start receiving so many emails from somebody, we gen- generally tend to hit the unsubscribe button then. So, yeah. So you would suggest that we find a way to have that personal connect that you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. You want to find that personal connection, whether it's emotional or sight, uh, visual um, or emotion, anything to really connect to your business and and give them a reason to purchase from you. Otherwise, it's just another business and just another company. Right. And there's so much of social media presence of each and every entity now that uh, this was something on my mind as well, that uh, Instagram and Facebook and uh, restaurants even now have Twitter handles. Moment marketing is such a huge thing now. Um, any advice that you would have about what, how not to go wrong when using social media or making a presence on social media? Keep it professional, um, but be consistent. That's the most important thing. Whether you post once a week, once a month, once a year, you just want to be consistent with whatever you're doing. Um, try to keep the colors the same uh, to, a, to a point and the tone that you're using in your text you want to keep all the same tone you don't want to sound like you're screaming um, or sound like you're being too aggressive you want to keep it that personable level Um, people nowadays don't want to buy from businesses they buy from people so you really want to be able to keep that personal tone and again it's all about engagement connecting on some sort of emotional level physical level whatever it may be it's that engagement with your post if they like it and they want to double tap to like that's the physical level of it and emotional level if they see your product and want to purchase, whether it's a hamburger or whatever you're trying to advertise. Um, There's got to be some sort of connection to someone scrolling on social media and what you're posting. 
and like you mentioned about uh, the personal connection i also know that each post must you know or each picture must tell a story only then it will emotionally um, uh, speak to the audience so when, because i'm in india i know that the food blogging scene over here is quite big so over here food bloggers do come in they help us tell our story they help us tell the story behind each and behind us and uh, how or why have we curated the menu how we have um i would like to know how the food blogging scene is in the us food food blogs are huge um it really gives that startup mom and pop restaurant either really good um boost that they need um really it's there to supplement um what you're already doing mm-hmm. again you go back to reviews it definitely helps having really good reviews from food bloggers um the best thing about a blog is you can create it for free you can create a blog for free and post organically and then build it from the ground up for pretty much no cost um if you want to start a food blog again it's a way to start a business no cost from the ground up but as a restaurant owner if you can get as many reviews from food bloggers as possible it's definitely beneficial and is there anything i need to know about how food blogging works in the us how do we approach food bloggers or how how is the transaction between uh, me as an establishment and a food blogger so there are various different ways to do it okay. the easiest way to be would to reach out directly either via email or their social media page and send them a message and say hey i would love for you to come try my product you know write us a nice review normally they'll do you know pay per review so you pay them x amount of dollars to do a review um or if you have grown as an establishment they will come to you for them to get recognized um on their end as well oh okay and uh, because we are speaking about the different kinds of uh, so media social media and technology uh, how beneficial is it to get listed on a restaurant app and if you can list some uh, mo- some of the most popular restaurant apps that 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 are very uh, dominant in the us for our listeners yeah you obviously uber eats and doordash are the two more more popular ones um for an and consu- consumer trying to order food uh, the big thing is getting on those apps is again ease of use you can sit at home you can sit anywhere you want and order pretty much any type of food you want if you're not on those apps then obviously a consumer cannot potentially purchase from you. Um nowadays purchasing whether it's food whether it's anything right now it's all about ease of use look at Amazon look at pretty much any any type of buying now you can even buy a car online. Um it's all about ease of use and being able to get your product quickly. Right so I I keep noticing you mentioning that things also have to be very user friendly. So I think that's something that I will have to keep in mind But apart from everything food I will have to have a team or my mind uh, in this department as well that how how am I approaching or how are our listeners who are venturing into the food industry approaching uh, the customers and how do we sound or what story do we tell am I right Yeah you definitely want that flow to be very consistent across the board um here at Univex we just did redid our website about a year and a half two years ago now and we pretty much changed the entire flow of the website the tone the colors how you can navigate through certain pages um and it's the same thing if you're a restaurant establishment you want the flow of your website to be nice and smooth mm mm-hmm, mm mm-hmm. so is also having a google business profile does that help as well apart from all the other things that we've already spoken about it definitely does um again contact info is right there your for us our brick and mortar location is here um but it's a way to again see reviews as well as get in contact with that restaurant very quickly um for us as a business and for the business side of things you get to see how many people viewed your google uh profile how many people called how many people looked up your address to go to your location so it does give you some good analytics on the back end for you to be able to see um how you're doing Oh wow so i'm actually getting an idea about why that code that it should not be left to one department and if i do not have a department i need people who you know who can read these or, or who can analyze these reports or, or these engagement insights that you're talking about i think that's Absolutely. really insightful and uh, if, while we were talking about uh, restaurant apps um, i'd also like to you know jump on the topic of delivery services would you suggest uh, partnering with a delivery service or having one's own uh, delivery mechanism in place what is more advisable and how do both of these things work i was going to say that's definitely um a hit or miss depending you can go okay. either way um 
in my opinion, it would be strictly off the volume of how much you're actually delivering. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can keep it in-house, normally it's more beneficial. You can utilize employees in-house, uh, give them more responsibilities um, versus paying fees and having to lower your margins to work in the fees of a delivery service company. Um, if you get to a certain point on the larger scale as a restaurant, obviously ease of use again with delivery quickly and, uh, you know, in a timely manner, it's definitely important. Um, I personally don't have any experience from the restaurant side okay. hiring these service companies. Um, but from a consumer side, you know, or from the business side of things looking in, that's the two factors I would consider. Oh, okay. And, uh, any suggestion that you would ha- have for us uh, in order to, you know, be able to make a mark uh, in this highly competitive industry because food industry in itself is very competitive. And especially I'm looking at New York City, which is going to be very, very uh, uh, c- competitive. So how, or for example, uh, because you are in the business, so you have that inside as well. And also you are in the US, so you are a customer yourself. So what is it that makes you go to your favorite restaurant, for example? Reviews are definitely a big thing. Um, Another big thing is do your research. Make sure your product is popular within that target market that you're looking for or that geographical location that you're looking to do. Um, Study your competitors, study other companies that are doing well or not doing well in the territory that you're trying to go to and figure out why they are or are not doing as good as they should be. Um, At the end of the day, again, be personable, be honest. You don't want to false advertise your product, Um, but really just, again, trying to find that emotional connection um, with your product and the consumer as to why your restaurant should be a, a nice welcoming meal versus a, um, a place that they wouldn't want to visit. So probably uh, the more I think about the business, I also have to equally think about the people and remove the business aspect from it. Got it. Um, yeah. Because you are from Univex, so I would also like to know about uh, what's the line of equipments that Univex uh, manufactures and distributes. Yeah, so we manufacture a full equipment line of countertop food preparation equipment, as well as pizza and bakery equipment. So everything from chopping up vegetables, shredding cheese, mixing dough, processing dough, making pizzas, all the way through baking it in ovens. Um, We have a full range of capabilities from vacuum sealers to store your food for longer periods of time, food processors, all things that help save labor, increase consistency in the product. Um, And at the end of the day, our high quality products to give to your you know, to prepare food for your customers. Definitely, this sounds very, it, it sounds like a very extensive line of different um, equipments because uh, it's it's rare for uh, for us to see this over here, especially. Also, I've heard that it's uh, it, open kitchens are a huge thing in US. So I am sure that your equipment also needs to be presentable for it to be seen from, by the customers looking at what their food is being cooked in. Uh, yep, absolutely. And so... What, what, how did Univex come up to uh, create this line of equipment or what led them to, you know, get into the side of uh, business? Yeah, so Univex was uh, founded in 1948 um, by a still, it's still a family owned business. Um, and the first product they ever sold was to the government way back when uh, it was our potato peeler. And uh, as the need for other products grown and the innovation on our side here has grown, um, we've kind of grown as a company based off consumer demands. So the only, you know, we continue to innovate and add new product, um, and it's all based off of our customers' needs. We're here to solve problems for customers, whether it's labor saving or increased consistency in a certain type of food processor or dough processor, um, or fill a need in the market where there just isn't anything right now. To, to help a, you know, to help a restaurant. Um, that's how we grow our product line. It's pretty much based off of what we see as the next step in the future of uh, kitchen equipment, but it's also based off consumer feedback and what the market's asking for uh, in that regards. Oh, okay. And so what is Julilex's um, company mission or what does it, you know, intend to give to its client uh, apart from what you've already, you, you've already made it quite clear, but I want to know it, that what is it that uh, it intends to bring to its client with its equipment? Yeah. So first off, customer service. We're always here to help. Our phones are on all the time. I have a 24 seven service hotline that you can always call in case anything were to happen. Oh, wow. um, 
we're, we pride ourselves on value engineering. So extremely high quality um, at a great price point for your restaurant, longevity of equipment as well, as long as it's properly maintained and serviced throughout the years and used as intended. Um, our equipment's intended to last many, many years. I still have equipment 20 plus years old out in the field that work like it's brand new. Um, we're also here though to, to educate. We want to make sure when you buy a piece of equipment from us that you understand that it's the right piece of equipment for you. I'm not just trying to sell you a piece of equipment just because I'm trying to sell you equipment. We want to make sure it's, it's the right piece of equipment for your needs. It's going to help a problem that you guys are having um, and give you a nice high quality solution. Uh, this uh, this is music to our ears because uh, it, it's very you know it's very scary to get into a new land and uh, especially with a lot of uh, with such a huge budget and get into something that we have no idea about a market we have no idea about there are so many manufacturers and distributors so this is uh, this is something which is a huge relief that uh, the equipment that once we've bought it we do not have to look at it again or we do not have to be concerned about that that's when we can start then focusing on our uh, on our mission correct yeah of course you want to properly maintain it um, and obviously preventative maintenance and service is always important to make sure that it's up to date and everything that you're doing is proper um, but at the end of the day um, yeah, we consider ourselves and, and our customers have proven it over time that our equipment's considered a high quality, high value uh, piece of equipment that'll last for many years to come. Great. Um, oh, because we've also, in the last, previous episodes, we've also looked at a lot of different formats of, of establishments. I wanted to know that uh, which is the most uh, popular format of establishment like restaurant or coffee houses that uh, buys uh, Univex equipments the most? So we have a very broad target market um, because of our broad uh, equipment line. We do mom and pop restaurants. We work with chain restaurants, pizzerias, bakeries, cafes. Um, we do healthcare. We also work with the government in their food service side of operations. Um, so I really don't narrow our target market down to one specific niche. Um, we really do have one or many pieces of equipment for pretty much every single type of operation. Um, at the end of the day, again, we're just here to, to help whatever you need. So if a, a coffee, you know, cafe needs a panini grill, we're here to help. If a pizzeria needs an oven or a mixer, I have that as well. So we have various product lines that can really range throughout the entire food service industry. Um, and again, it ranges from little, smaller countertop items to very large uh, ovens and dough processing equipment. Okay, so I narrow my question down that... Uh what equipment or technology I must have, for example, if I have a food truck or a bakery, these for these two kinds of establishments, what are the must have technologies or equipments that I, I, I do need in my kitchen? Yeah, I'll use a bakery, for example. Uh, you definitely need a mixer just because of how versatile it is to mix your products, your cake batters, your creams, frostings. Uh, depending on how big you are, a dough sheeter is very helpful to saving labor if you don't want to roll things out by hand. Um, at the end of the day, those are your two biggest factors on the equipment side for a bakery. Um, and then an oven, of course, whether it's combi oven, a bakery oven, depending on your establishment, where you're located, how big you guys are, and the variety of your menu. I would say those are the three largest um, or most important piece of equipment in the bakery side of things outside of the product itself. So what ingredients are you using? Um, but a mixer is probably single-handedly the most important piece of equipment in a bakery, just because of how versatile it is. You can do different things in a mixer, make creams, whips, frosting, cake batter, pretty much anything you really need for a bakery can be all done in the same machine. And, and, and for, oh, for example, for a food truck, or a food truck, it depends on what type of food truck you're going for. Um, I know if you're going for like a fast fast food type place, you know, fryers are super important, refrigeration, um, minimizing, you're maximizing our opportunity in a minimal space. So if you're doing prep fridges with refrigeration underneath, prep table on top, um, some sort of oven, ventless oven is super important in a food truck. So you don't have to really worry about venting out the top or the side of your truck. Um, those would be the more important things for sure. Oh, Okay. And uh, what, because this pandemic, we cannot ignore the fact that the, it's taken over the whole world. So is, are there any changes in the trends uh, that are working best for bakery industry and food trucks uh, right now? Or what is it that's working best for these 
uh, in terms of marketing, of course. Yeah, so social media is huge. Um, social media right now um, is for especially for food trucks is definitely the way to go. Uh, TikTok has definitely taken off. So if you can go viral on TikTok with somebody <laughs> or multiple people tagging you in your location at your food truck, it's probably the quickest way to go viral, if you want to call it, uh, on the food, you know, food truck side of things. Oh, okay. And um, I think this was very, it, it was a proper elaborate conversation with a lot of new insights that I've had about, you know, marketing uh, and how that is also an important part, not just my menu and not just how what I'm uh, choosing to cook and where I'm placed. Um, are there any uh, golden advice? Is there any golden advice that you would have for our listener, any uh, listeners, any closing advice? Um, again, be personable. Don't be too pushy or too salesy. Have your customer connect with your business in some sort of level. Um, make sure you're doing your research as well. And on social media, be consistent. You want to be consistent, whether it's once a day, once a week, twice a week, you just want to make sure you're posting consistently. Thank you so much. Also, one last thing that I want my head also to be occupied with, um, once again, how much do you think I should be uh, sparing? Or what percentage of my budget should I be sparing for marketing? About 20 to 30 percent. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your time and insights. This will surely help me as well as all of our listeners to make a little bit more informed decision than we would have made otherwise. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you.